Shout out to Felix Gray for sponsoring this update. Your eyes weren't made to stare at computer screens all day, so give them a break with glasses that filter blue light and eliminate glare from screens. Get yours at felixgrayglasses.com slash no. Welcome to the No, I'm Mika. If you want to put your Splatoon 2 and Smash Brothers skills to the test, you're going to get a shot at E3. Nintendo just announced two events for the upcoming conference, with the Splatoon 2 World Championships taking place in the days leading up to E3, and a Smash Brothers Invitational going down as well. They confirmed that this will be the brand new Switch version of the game, with select competitors facing off. Doug Bowser, Nintendo of America's Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing, said, Nintendo always takes an original approach to video game competitions, and the portability of Nintendo Switch enables unique gameplay possibilities. Possibilities. We're looking forward to watching some of the best players in the world test their skills against each other in these two uniquely competitive games. Both events will be live streamed June 11th and 12th. Good news, God of War fans! The game is finally happening for real. Director Cory Barlog confirmed on Twitter that it is out of development and has officially gone gold, writing, God of War is gold, baby! Thank you to every wonderful human who worked so hard to make this happen. Neither word nor emoji can express the love I have for you all. In addition to that, we're also learning more about the game itself, which apparently has no loading screens and no cuts. In a new video released by Sony, God of War cinematography director Dori Arazi breaks down the process by which the studio achieved an unprecedented single shot for all of the game's action, meaning the camera never cuts away and always transitions seamlessly, which frankly sounds pretty cool and immersive. All of that information comes with just under a month before the game releases, and you can play it yourself on April 20th. A Way Out, the cinematic cooperative story title from EA and Hazelight, releases tomorrow, and just in time, the reviews have started to drop. A Way Out is currently holding an 80 on Metacritic and a 79 on OpenCritic at the time of writing. The general consensus among the reviewers seems to be that the game is innovative, while also hearkening back to the days of good old-fashioned couch-based co-op. However, some noted that it struggles under the weight of trying to do too many things, and that its storyline isn't quite as good as they'd hoped. Still, many agreed that it's a game that deserves to be played. IGN said in its 8.3 review, If you go into A Way Out thinking its mandatory two-player go-op is a gimmick, you'll likely come out of it realizing that it couldn't have been done any other way. Vincent and Leo's journey will have you and a friend performing tasks together, both mundane and dramatic, and the result is a memorable, variety-packed cinematic adventure that feels like what Telltale's games might have evolved to if they'd leaned into the game mechanics instead of phasing them out. A Way Out releases tomorrow, March 23rd, for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. BioWare and EA have barely confirmed that another Dragon Age is in the works, giving us scant information about what the game is actually about. But now, former lead writer Mike Laidlaw is opening up about what he wanted to do with the series when he was still at the studio, and also revealed that the game might not be firing on all cylinders at the moment. In a conversation with US Gamer at GDC, Laidlaw indicated that the game's direction centers around some of the revelations we got about Solus at the end of Inquisition, as well as the Trespasser DLC. Laidlaw also spoke a little bit about the size of the game's crew, saying, I was going to have a very small skeleton crew, and I'm lucky because Patrick Weeks is an exceptional lead writer, Daniel Kading is an exceptional lead designer. There were two very veteran designers who could hold a vision, and it was going to move down to a very small team. So it sounds like all those reports about Anthem taking most of Bioware's staff are definitely true, and I won't be seeing the conclusion to my Dragon Age story anytime soon. Single tier. If you're all wondering if we'll ever get to see Xbox One and PlayStation 4 players square off against each other in Fortnite, well, the game's publisher says don't lose hope. While Sony's policy is currently preventing it, Epic Games founder Tim Sweeney said at GDC recently that he's sure crossplay will happen in the future. In a presentation, he noted that both Sony and Microsoft have agreed to allow cross-platform play between their platforms and PC, Mac, iOS, and Android. He added, there's only one connection that's not enabled yet, and it's the PlayStation to Xbox connection. We're working on that with all these folks, and we're optimistic the day will come. He also said, I think that there's great value in PlayStation players connecting with Xbox and vice versa. Everybody in the industry would be better off with these connections in place, so we'll continue to advocate on that behalf. So that's pretty cool that they're continuing to push for it, and hopefully it'll happen sooner rather than later. It is no secret that Fortnite is really really popular these days, and we've got new data that shows that it's now eclipsed its arch rival. According to Superdata, Fortnite had more viewers and made more money than PUBG last month on PC. In February, Fortnite had 14 million unique viewers on Twitch compared to 8.7 million for PUBG. And that's a big turnaround from just the month before, when PUBG was still comfortably ahead at 8.5 million unique viewers compared to 6.1 million for Fortnite. As for money, Superdata says that Fortnite made $126 million during February on PC, while PUBG pulled in $103 million. So in short, according to Superdata, Fortnite is eating PUBG's lunch. 
Well, I hope it's tasty. Hey, remember last week when we got all excited about a remastered Tomb Raider trilogy for the PC? Well, yeah, that turns out it's not happening. The third party studio who announced it, Realtek VR, said in a tweet yesterday that it's no longer working on any remasters. And that's apparently because they never had permission to do so. Well, Square Enix, which owns the rights to the franchise, took down all the videos about the remasters from YouTube, saying they were never officially sanctioned. In a statement, its subsidiary, Crystal Dynamics, said, while we always welcome passion and excitement for the Tomb Raider franchise, the remasters in question were initiated and advertised without seeking approval. As such, they were never officially sanctioned. Ensuring fans receive high quality gaming experiences is at the heart of our mission as a company, which requires all projects to go through proper channels. We are thrilled about the future of Tomb Raider and cannot thank fans enough for their continued support and excitement for the brand. You may remember that Chris Hemsworth was cast as one of the leads in the new Men in Black sequel slash reboot slash reimagining thing at Sony, and they were looking for a female person of color to play his partner. Well, they found that person, and it's a friend from work. But a bum psh. Tessa Thompson, his Thor Ragnarok co-star, is in negotiations to join up for a sci-fi comedy, according to The Hollywood Reporter. Their sources say the new movie, directed by the Fate of the Furious F. Gary Gray, will be global in scope and feature a true ensemble cast, meaning Hemsworth and Thompson won't be the only central figures of the movie. Their chemistry is off the charts in Ragnarok, and Hemsworth has proven his comedic chops in stuff like Ghostbusters and Vacation, so this could be a whole lot of fun. If there's any doubt that John Boyega was a big fanboy at heart, then let this little bit of geekiness settle things for good. While doing publicity for Pacific Rim Uprising, which features his first producing credit, he was asked about one of his favorite animes, Attack on Titan. Good choice, my dude, and he laid out what he'd do if he could produce a live action version of it. He said he'd keep it true to artist style in anime, make sure the cast was predominantly Japanese actors, and he wouldn't rule out playing a titan himself. In the same interview with MTV, Boyega also said if he was ever tasked to produce a new Star Wars movie, he'd want to bring back the older public to the screen. So yep. A true geek at heart, completely confirmed. By now, you've probably heard that Toys R Us is closing up all of its 735 stores in the US, and all those toys have gotta go somewhere, which means that it's going to have the mother of all going out of business sales. That was expected to start today, but there was a bit of a delay, and now the retailer expects the sales to start tomorrow morning. So if you can wipe your tears away long enough to drive to your nearest store, Go for it, but keep in mind that there might be crowds. Oh, and the stores probably haven't gotten a lot of new inventory for the last month or so, so a lot of the popular stuff could already be gone. But still, we're sure there are some bargains there, some very, very bittersweet bargains, but probably Amiibo, so go get yourself some. That's all the news we have for you today. Remember to comment on any of your favorite news stories in the comments below, and for more news from every corner of the internet, like this video, and if you're new around here, subscribe to The Know. Thanks to Felix Gray for sponsoring this update. If you ever noticed your eyes are tired and strained after hours and hours and hours of gaming, or, you know, being productive, if that's more your speed, go you, there is a reason for that. Your eyes aren't made for it. They need a break and you deserve one too. Felix Gray lenses filter blue light and eliminate glare without the color distortion, so you can see that in some other computer glasses. Plus, their frames are made of premium Italian acetate, which is the same stuff Versace uses. It's kind of cool. If you haven't tried it before, it's kind of difficult to describe, but it feels like nice and smooth and softer somehow. Felix Gray glasses are available in both non-prescription and reading lenses, and they have a bunch of different styles to suit different faces and heads, and these ones, if you're wondering, are the Turing style. Try yours with free shipping and free returns at felixgrayglasses.com.